Is it finally time to buy an intraoral scanner? Has the scanner technology caught up to all the hype, or is there still some room for improvement? And which one should you buy? I'm James Roback, Director of Marketing and Sales for Utica Dental Laboratory, and we're going to get into it next. <music> Today we're going to take a good look into intraoral scanners. Of all the digital technology that has come about in the past quarter century or so, nothing has received as much fanfare as intraoral scanners. Said to be a mainstay of any modern dental office, we see our clients time and again fall back on traditional impression methods. This could be because of a few different reasons, but usually it has to do with frustrations with the imaging tech as a whole. I spent some time speaking with a number of our clients who send predominantly digital scans to try to get an idea of where the technology is today, how it compared to prior years, and what it is they do to ensure a good quality scan. The concept of CAD CAM dentistry was first introduced in 1973 by Dr. Francois Duray. His pioneering imaging research really paved the way for the scanner technology of today. It wasn't until 1987 that Serona Dental Systems implemented the first practical use of this imaging technology in their CIRAC machines. CIRAC, or Chairside Economical Restoration Aesthetic Ceramic System dominated the scanner landscape until 2006 when iTero launched its first scanning system. By 2017, more than 14 different companies introduced scanners at the International Dental Show in Cologne, Germany. Today, the majority of dental supply companies offer an intraoral scanner. Some of the more popular brands being 3Shape, Plan Mecca, iTero, and CareStream. Traditionally, scanners utilize one of three different imaging technology systems. Confocal laser scanning, triangulation technique, and active wave front sampling. However, in the past five years, nearly all new scanners have been produced using confocal laser scanning. Using this imaging principle, a laser is emitting through a pinhole and focused on the subject. The confocal imaging plane is known because only the subject that is in focus reflects back the signal and creates an image. Any part of the subject that is not in focus, the image will not be captured. Thus, a full 3D scan can be stitched together by combining two dimensional images at different confocal planes. This imaging technique is known as point and stitch reconstruction. I will only briefly touch on triangulation technique and wavefront sampling as both of those technologies are rarely used in today's products. Triangulation technique was pioneered and used by CIRAC and wavefront sampling by 3M's Lava Chairside Impression System. In both of these cases, a powder was used on the subject in order to reduce any glare and provide a connector surface for a reference. This comparison was printed in a late 2021 issue of Inside Dental Technology. As you can see, in terms of the key performance categories, nearly all of these systems have been reported as being within a reasonable margin of specification. So with so many companies claiming to have a good quality product and with their own admission of their specifications being really within shouting distance of each other, how can you tell them apart? I surveyed our clients to try to better understand why there seems to be a disconnect with the manufacturers and the user experience that dentists have when implementing the technology. In our conversations, I tried to uncover how easy it was to use the scanner, uh, what sort of trouble do you run into, how often do you have errors, how easy is the training, and a general idea of satisfaction. In the end, the short answer is most of the clients were satisfied, and really all of their scanners take good quality scans. But of course, there are some exceptions. One of our clients, an iTero user for over 10 years said, 
Scanning is always easier than taking a traditional impression. He mentioned that a full arch scan can be completed in a little over a minute on average. He said the Itero system uses colored imaging, allowing for the margins to be easily distinguished. Itero also offers a program where they prep the scans before sending into the dental lab. He did mention that saliva can be a problem, as any reflective service can cause issues with your scan quality. Another Itero customer said that a crown can be scanned in less than five minutes, and scans are accurate up to 90% of the time. A third client who uses a 3M True definition remarked that digital scans were way easier than traditional impressions. Rescans only occurred about 10% of the time, and the entire process only takes about 10 minutes from prep to scan. All in all, they are very happy with how tolerable the system is. A Plan Mecca Emerald user said that the system is very easy to use. The wand is light and responsive. Scans are very accurate. Mistakes only happen due to human error, and that they rescan as little as 5%. She also added that there was no noise on the impressions. So what's the problem? The problem is there seems to be a disconnect between the dental office who sends the scan and the dental lab. Oftentimes, we see scans that are inaccurate, missing data, or lack any clear distinguishable margin. One client chalks this up to the training programs. He said that the training concept is easy, but it's also easy to make mistakes. He went on to say that scanning technology as a whole is a bit overstated. A good scan takes longer than a good triple tray impression, and that attention to detail is paramount. He even went as far as to say that errors frequently occur and nearly 100% of the scans need to be touched up. The simple facts are that many scans that we receive that are deemed unusable or inaccurate have simple mistakes that are easily correctable. A cross-reference of accounts has shown that some of the clients that I interviewed who were overwhelmingly positive about their scanner's abilities proved to contain many inaccuracies. In all of these cases, it was the dental assistants who were charged with taking the scan and reporting it to the dental lab. It is not necessarily impossible for a dental assistant to be able to take a good quality scan. However, relying solely on the training from the company of the scanner may be a mistake. It's important to remember that a strong protocol with checks and balances is necessary to ensure that a quality scan is taken each and every time. The scanner technology is not infallible. Oftentimes there is chatter or noise, delineation, missing data, or other general inaccuracies. Patients seem to be much more favorable to the scanner technology compared to impression material as a whole, almost across the board. All of our clients mentioned that you will certainly save money on impression material throughout the life of your scanner. Also, as time wears on, there is a certain perceived notion that scanning technology is the way of the future with the general public, and it gives your practice more of a sense of being. The feedback that I receive from doctors who regularly do take their scans and review them is that nearly all of the mistakes are human made and can easily be prevented. Assuming that the subject is properly prepped and a strong procedure is followed, there is no reason why digital scans can't be used for anything over the gum line. There is no doubt that intraoral scanner technology has improved to the point where a good quality scan can be consistently taken, but it's no magic bullet. Be sure to always check your scans. Any delineation, noise, or missing data must be immediately addressed or a new scan must be taken altogether. There are some instances where traditional impressions are superior, especially if any information needs to be gathered from below the gum line. It may also be beneficial for you to repack the cord around your prep before you take a scan. It is possible for the gum to retract and cover up the margin from the time that you prep the tooth as the time you take the scan. It's also important to keep in mind that STL files are not in color. Some of the most modern scanners, particularly those made by Itero and Trios, do scan in color. This is advantageous as it can make it very obvious as to where the margin lies. However, unless your modeling software is in the same system as your scanning, the images are unlikely to share this proprietary source. 
In most cases, we are forced to use STL files. So it is important to know what imaging software your lab is using. In any case where we can't clearly tell where a margin lies, we will be forced to guess or discontinue your work altogether. One of our clients suggests ditching your own scans. He even goes as far as to say that it is a must. Brian Parent, manager of the Crown and Bridge Department at Utica Dental Lab, says it is not necessary for a doctor to always ditch his scans. However, anytime a doctor does decide to do so, he takes all the guesswork out of it. The scanning tech, by and large, seems to work very well in nearly all cases. However, it has not come far enough to overcome human error and replace meticulous attention to detail. The technology may have become easier to use over the years, but that does not mean it's infallible. At the end of the day, you just can't replace a good attentive dentist with a camera on a stick. You can only be carried so far by the technology. The rest is really up to you. So I really hope you found that information useful. If you did, give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There is a link below for a fee schedule if you're interested in sending a case. Please go ahead and give us a call. I'll be back soon with a new video in the series, this one addressing carbon 3D printed devices. But until then, this is so long for now.